Hey guys, it's your Jabba Geek here, and welcome back to Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney, where we are about to start, um, the trial, the trial of Iris, um, and I would say I really have no clue where this is going. I know our client is innocent because of course she is in this game, but I also don't, I'm, like, I speculated how the trial was going to be set up last time, but I have no clue how, like, the questioning and, like, the stories are going to progress. Um, so let's just go ahead and get started. Oh my, Mr. Larice feels that way about me? Apparently, he isn't aware of your real secret at all. This is no time to be embarrassed. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm just partly accustomed to that sort of thing. Worry not. In any case, whatever it was that he saw on the night of the incident, mark my words, I will drag it out of him. Does that mean Mr. Larice is the witness today? No. I believe that none will be the first to take the stand. Sister Bikini. She claims to have seen the very instant in which you carried out the crime. I just want to ask you one last time. It really wasn't you who killed Miss Elise Dionim, correct? That is correct. It wasn't me. Very well, then. Um, Mr. Edgeward? Yes? You're a prosecutor, aren't you? Are you sure about this? If your true identity is revealed... Don't worry, I've made the necessary arrangements, but of course they're going to fail, because where's the fun in that? Uh, I see. Iris? It is a prosecutor's job to doubt people. But right now, I'm a defense attorney. The defense attorney's job is to believe in people, and to believe until the bitter end. That's why my friend told that's what my friend told me once. Mr. Edgeworth. I simply ask that you watch and decide for yourself whether or not I am fit to do the task I have been entrusted. Very well, sir. I leave my defense in your capable hands. Um, that's already questionable. Oh, is this the Canadian judge? Court is now in session for the trial of Sister Iris of Hazakura Temple. The defense is ready, Your Honor. The defense does indeed appear to be ready. However, the same cannot be said for the prosecution in this case. Indeed. I'm not sure I like such a blatant waste of this court's time. An empty prosecutor's chair can only mean that the prosecutor has no confidence in their ability to prove their case. It would seem this case is already over before it had a chance to begin. I am ready to announce my verdict at this time. The court finds the defendant. Hold it. Objection. Francesca. The prosecution stands ready. I imagine she's like huffing and puffing. And, and you are? Francesca Von Karma, prosecuting prodigy. Von Karma, you say? Perchance, you wouldn't be of any relation to the legendary prosecutor Manfred Von Karma. Legends are a thing of the past. I am a Von Karma, that is all. Upon a special request, I flew in today for the purposes of prosecuting this case. Y you did? Then you must be quite a big shot, eh? By the way, Mr. Edgeworth, Yes, Your Honor? I'm almost certain that I've seen you somewhere before, or am I just imagining things? You look very much like a prosecutor I met once. I believe you are imagining things, Your Honor. Miss Von Karma, do you have anything to say? There is no such weakling as this man among those in the prosecutor's office. There, There isn't, but I'm sure once before in this courtroom... I told you there is no such weakling. What is that, a whip? I'm not sure I can care for such a thing in my courtroom. 
but Bailiff, remove that whip at. I have no objection to the whip. You, you don't? The prosecution can wield a whip or drink 17 cups of coffee, but there is still only one truth. That is what I stand here to prove today. This promises to be interesting, Miles Edgeworth. I had expected to face Phoenix right here today, but I'm looking. But looking at you now, maybe this is what I've been waiting for all this time. Miles Edgeworth, I will not allow this chance to crush you slip through my fingers. I see you brought your flair for the histrionic. Allow me to add to the things before. Add things I'm not sure about. People acting bizarrely in my court. The stage is set. Now continue with the proceedings, Your Honor. Okay, so one thing I did not expect was for Francesca to make a reappearance. This is going to be interesting. Very well, Miss Von Karma. Please give an outline of this case. With as little whipping as possible. The murder victim is the famed picture book author, Miss Elise Dunham. Wait, how did- Wait, isn't the sword touching the ground? How- That picture makes no sense. Uh, I'll continue the reading though. Her body was found in the Hazakura Temple Courtyard. She had been stabbed through the torso by a ceremonial sword from a golden statue. The sword in this picture is the weapon in question, correct? Very well. The court accepts this photo of the crime scene. I don't. It looks weird. There is no mistake. This was the doing of Sister Iris. After all, there is a witness to our crime. Very well. Please bring this witness to the stand. I do want to see something about the photo first. Okay, I was like trying to look at her for her walking stick, but I don't see it. And also... The way she was stabbed, like, unless the, like, the sword would have definitely have had to have been removed from the statue, but I think with, um, the previous case with mass to mass, we know that's true, I think, at least of similar types of statues, but still, the way she's positioned is weird, and then the, her staff is gone. Which is something I do want to ask about eventually. And so it begins. My first and last trial as a defense attorney. You hope. Oh my gosh, she's too small. Witness, state your name and occupation, please. Oh, hold on here. I'm not sure about being not sure if I care for this at all. Witness, please stand up nice and straight. <laughs> if I recall correctly, there are a few milk crates in the defendant's lobby for our back pain plagued witness. Bailiff, fetch a crate for this poor lady, please. Here we go, we can see her now. I wonder if in the zoom out we can see her standing on the crates. Once again, your name and occupation, please. Little old me? Well, I'm the head nun of Azur. Hazakura Temple on Eagle Mountain. My name is Bikini. You got it? Bikini. Nice to meet everyone. But you don't appear to be wearing a bikini right now. What? The courtroom is the Garden of Holy Judgment. Those of lechery and their hearts should leave the sanctuary at once. You want me to leave? No need to get your bikinis in a twist. Let me tell you, I'm a sight to behold in summer. In any case, witness, I hear that you saw the crime take place on the night in question. That's right. I can still hardly believe it myself, to be honest. There's no way dear little Iris could do anything like that. Let us hear what you have to say, then. First, tell us about your own movements that night, eh? Alright, here we go. That night, I was helping an acolyte with her training in the inner temple, but... Well, as you can see, my back legs act up. Violently. So, I left Iris to help the acolyte and returned to Hazakura Temple. 
There's no bath at the inner temple, you see, and I needed a long, hot soak. I was after I finished that I was heading back. That's when I saw it. Hmm. So it was simply coincidence that you found yourself returning to Hazakura Temple? Yes, you could say that. Um, I need to reach down real quick. Alright, here we go. Yes, you could say that. If my back hadn't been in so much pain, I would have stayed at the inner temple. Sounds like a pretty important statement she just made. There's only one problem with this testimony I can see. And you're not about to fall at the first hurdle. Now are you, Ms. Miles Edgeworth? Mr. Edgeworth, please begin in cross-examination. Um, let's do save. Alright, there we go. I was helping an acolyte with her training. My back likes to act up. Left Iris to help acolyte. The one thing that doesn't make sense was this statement. You left Iris to help? With what? What do you think? The Acolyte's training, of course. It's just past 10 p.m., so we were just standing to enter the training exercises proper. Wasn't it your place to remain with the Disciple? Well, the job is simple, simply to watch over the Acolytes so they don't pass away. Just confirm this point again. That night, you met Iris in the Inner Temple, correct? Yes, yes. She's a gentle, honest girl. She's never once failed to follow my directions. Hmm, let's see. Received a four light cell. Testimony. I I definitely think it's just yo, she didn't leave, supposedly. Objection. Witness, have to undergo their own trials, I'm afraid. The defendant's fate rests on their powers of observation and memory, after all. Well, well, well. Don't worry, I'm more than up to the task. I'm a woman of faith, after all. The head honcho of Hazakura Temple. In that case, Miss Honcho, I'd like you to explain something for me. The discrepancy between your testimony and that of the defendant, Iris. She claims that after ringing the lights out bell, she went back and stayed in her room. Which means she did not go to the inner temple at all. N no. She said that... A defendant or a witness? Who is more likely to lie, do you suppose? The defendant is simply lying to cover her back. But that is completely illogical. The murder was committed in the courtyard of Hazakura Temple. Claiming that she went to the inner temple would make for a much better alibi. True. But that is odd. Whatever the reason, I can't believe that she would lie. Hmm. She does indeed have honest eyes. Blah. All people lie. That is my belief. Why am I the only one being whipped in here? I'm sure you're the only one available. Anyway, neither the witness nor the defendant have any reason to lie. Which means, you must call your memory into question. Dear, dear, dear. You're older than me and yet you want to play that game, do you? Uh, well, that isn't exactly what I... My memory is perfect, crystal clear, especially in winter. Is it because your bones act up because of the weather? I think that's it. Then, I suppose it's too early to end this cross-examination, eh? Mr. Edgeworth, if you are going to question the memory of this witness, you will need to show me more decisive, more decisive piece of evidence. Understood, Your Honor. I was naive to think that alone would do the trick. 
Then please add your comments about Iris to the testimony, and let us return to the cross-examination. Knight was helping the train, but my back acts up violently. Also, let me save before I lose that progress. Alex act up. She had been dressed exactly as she had at dinner, except I have her cover. Are you sure you're not making a mistake? You, young man, need to get your estimation of me up from the floor. Iris always wears the same clothes. The smallest thing out of place would have stood out like a sore thumb to me. You're making a mistake, thinking I made a mistake. An excellent finish there, witness. Still, I have to wonder. Um, then why do I have her hood? Objection! Witness, let's get one thing straight. The defendant whom you claim to have met, she was wearing this demon warding hood, correct? Of course. That is a very important piece of clothing. I have, you know. Um, wait a minute. But hold it right there. Why do you have that? That's the question of the day, now isn't it, Miss Von Karma? I'll have you know that this hood was given to someone as a gift that night. Before the lights- <coughs> Excuse me. Before the lights out, bell was rung. Wh what You know where I'm going with this, don't you? If the witness had seen the defendant as she claims, then, Irish, then the iris she saw should have been missing this very hood. Well, well, well. Oh, she is standing on crates. That's cute. It's not a bad feeling at all, exposing contradictions like this. Now I understand that happy look on Wright's face every time he does it. Order. Order in the court. Sister, this hood. You have spare ones around the temple, don't you? Spares? Well, I do tend to make too many of them. I see. A stockpile. A surplus of hoods, eh? Each nun has only given one hood. This should have been the only hood that Iris owned. Hmm. Then this is quite strange. But if there was a surplus of hoods, then she could have worn one of those. Or someone could have stolen it. And since Iris is the only other nun up there, she assumed it was Iris. That's possible at this point. There is no contradiction here. Hmm. I'm sorry to break this to you, Miss Von Karma, but you won't get away that easily. Discrepancies such as this will sow seeds in any human heart. The seeds of doubt. Witness? While I don't wish to call your testimony into doubt, you must give every detail with precision. But I'm not sure I'm comfortable going along with this. Sister, you shall continue with your testimony. Tell us what you saw after finishing your bath, on your way back to the inner temple. And though seeds of doubt are spreading, are sprouting in the judge's heart, they just need a little more stimulation to bear fruit. Contradictory stimulation. That sounded really weird, Miles. I finished my bath around 11, and I thought I should return to the inner temple. And as I was walking back, I heard a noise from the courtyard. I took a look and... Iris was... Oh, Mystic Elise. Iris was... And with that sword, of all things, I don't know why I started that over. Mystic Elise was staying in the corner of the room, which faces out onto the courtyard. Wait. If... I'm sorry. According to the te her testimony, she saw Iris stab Elise, but then somehow the sword, while she was watching, ended up back in the statue's hand. I highly doubt that. Miss Elise was staying in the corner room, which faces out onto the courtyard. The stabbing I saw must have occurred after she was pushed out of her window. Wait, didn't the autopsy say that, yeah, she fell after being stabbed, so that doesn't make sense. 
You saw a truly terrible sight, didn't you? If I was in your place, then it would be much like Miss Von Karma whipping Mr. Edgeworth and two in court. And me, seeing it all from this very chair. Or, well, something like that. This judge, his imagination is about as vivid and creative as Detective Gumshoe. I would look the fool if I commented on such foolishness. Anyway, this case is mine, Miles Edgeworth. Calling everyone by their full name, can't you do something about that habit of yours? Now it's fun to call him by your full name, don't you know? Okay. I don't- I was about to say something, but I think I'll jinx myself, so I'm just gonna stay quiet. Um, I finished my bath around 11, return, took a look in IRS, Mystic Elise, Jesus Courtyard, the stabbing I saw must have occurred after she was pushed, but we know that's not true because of the um, autopsy report. Impressive logic, that's what I like to say, anyway. Oh, please do. My brain is something else, especially in winter. However, I think you are overlooking one thing. Miss Von Karma, would you be so kind as to take another look at the autopsy report? The, the autopsy report? The victim did fall from a height of 10 feet. However, this fall was after she was killed. Th that's right, it says after death right here. The scene the witness claims to have seen is contradictory. If the defendant stabbed and killed the victim there in the courtyard, how did the victim go on to take a 10-foot fall? Order, order. The victim was killed and then fell. If that is the case, then the victim must have been killed in her room, don't you agree? Th that is the logical conclusion. Yes, that's right. The victim must have been stabbed by the defendant in her own room. Unless what she saw was Iris trying to, or, or who she thought was Iris, taking out the sword instead of in. That might make sense. Um, I know I said that weirdly, but I think maybe... She was then thrown out of her window down into the courtyard below. Were there any signs of a struggle in Miss Dionim's room? She was stabbed with a sword that would leave a blood stain, wouldn't you agree? But, well, Miss Von Karma, was there any blood? No traces of blood were found in the victim's room. Your whip has just caused traces of blood to be found in my glorious playoff beard. However, if there was no blood in the room, I'm sure there's no need for me to go over this, as I'm sure your honor is well aware of when a stab wound produces the most blood. When it produces the most blood, very little blood is actually lost at the moment of the blade's insertion. If you want to talk about when the blood would be lost from a body, that would be when the blade is removed. Indeed. With the weapon still in place, it acts like a lid on the wound. That's true. With the weapon still in the body, there wouldn't be much bleeding. A perfectly reasonable line of thinking. We have come to a conclusion then. The victim was thrown out of the window with the sword still in place. This removes all the contradictions. Except her seeing Iris be stabbing Elise. That still has that contradiction there. Order, order, order. I must admit this is a probable version of events that does not match the witness's statement. I'd expect no less for, from Ventresca von Karma. She locates and takes control of every vital point. Hmm. It seems that we need a clearer testimony from the witness. Remove all supposition on your part and tell us only the facts, please. Witness, please. Remain standing on the crate. Don't go selling me short now. The weight of winter snow has bent me out of shape, especially my back and my mood. 
Sister, please give us your testimony. I will give you a vigorous massage once we are finished here. With the whip? Oh boy. Alright, alright. When I looked across the scene, the sword was already in place. Thinking about it now, I actually didn't see her stab Mystic Elise. i never seen so much blood before. That's when I fainted. You can't blame me, can you? And when I awoke, Mystic Ami was stabbing Mystic Elise through the back. Okay, so she passed out. I forgot about that. Hmm. This all confirms Miss Von Karma's theory. Von Karma strive for nothing but perfection. Putting together such facts is nothing for me. You should know that, Miles Edgeworth. Perfection is own possibility, Francesca Von Karma. And I'm here to teach you just that. Further details. Um... Although, I guess it's... When I looked across the scene, the sword was already in place, thinking I didn't actually see her stab, never seen so much blood before, which means she was taking the sword out. So when I fainted, you can't blame me, can you? Mystic. Ami was stabbing. Why would she take the blade out and then put it back in? So you're saying that you saw the victim's blood? Th that's right. Some of it had splattered onto Iris, too. When the defendant was arrested, she was meditating in her room, and her blood-flecked clothing was neatly folded in the corner. What? Her clothes were blood-flaked as well? Hmm. That seems quite conclusive to me. What should I do? Press this point further? I think so. Going back to your previous statement, you said that you saw little bleeding when the victim was stabbed, but now you say you saw the victim bleeding? Well, well, I say that what I saw is what I saw. W what did you see? Maybe I didn't see the poor woman get stabbed, but I saw the girl pull the sword out of her, plain as day. Pulling the sword out? Well, it wasn't exactly pulling. It was more like came out. Witness, you'll add this statement to your testimony. Oh, was that important? More important than you can imagine. I saw the instant in which the blade plunged into the hilt was smoothly drawn out. So it has to be this statement that... from stuff in the back. Okay, so... Hmm. The... I honestly don't see how the sword can be smoothly taken out because of its design. Um, like it has to be because of like how the sword is constructed, right? pressure on this before I smoothly you say you're saying you saw the sword smoothly slide out that's right the whole thing happened right next to the gold statue of mystic Ami mystic Elise was on the ground and Iris stooped over her the sword was buried up to the hilt 
but there was only blood on the lower half. When Iris stood up, the sword was in her hand, just slid out of Mystic Elise's body. It slid out from that gaping wound. It goes without saying that if the sword was to move, there would be bleeding. Nothing out of place here. Is that really the case? I cannot but feel that something about this testimony is very out of place. That something which couldn't possibly have happened appears to have happened. Yeah. Oh my gosh, I did not mean to do that. I have a habit of doing stupid stuff like this. Um, I really need to learn my keyboard. Alright. Oops. Saw it plunge, and now we'll present the sword. Sister Bikini. You are a reliable witness. At least, I like to think so. But there are too many contradictions here. W what do you mean? You make it sound as though I'm a liar. But you're a handsome young man, so I'll forgive you. What contradictions are you talking about? In the scene that the witness claims to have seen, the weapon was thrust up to its hilt into the victim. Furthermore, the killer withdrew the weapon smoothly from her body. However, both of these are complete impossibilities. What do you mean? Please explain. Explain yourself. To start with, do you think it would be possible to stab someone to the hilt with this? No matter how I look at the defendant, she doesn't appear strong enough for that. Doesn't appear? What meaningless dribble. I too may appear to be weak and frail, but I can crush men under my heel and make them weep, should I so choose. The objection stands. I wept a little back there, I must admit. That isn't the only issue here. If this sort was truly stabbed into the body up to the hilt, well, just look at the branches on it. It certainly wouldn't come out smoothly. Th that's... We also have the problem of the amount of bleeding. It's true that when a blade is left in the body, it acts as a plug of sorts. However, when the weapon is shaped like this, it's an entirely different story. The wound would be too large for the blade to completely stop the bleeding. But that's nothing more than conjecture. In reality, the victim was stabbed with the shishichito. Even a weapon of this nature may still sometimes slide out smoothly, and may still sometimes stop the blood loss. Not the way it was constructed, now. I'm not finished. There is still one more conclusive contradiction. You still got more? This is one is simple. If this sword really was thrust all the way to the hilt, why is there only blood on the tip of it? If this witness is telling the truth, then there should be blood along the entire length of the sword. No. It's 4-4. Four, four. Francesca. Bravo, Miles Edgeworth. Raising this many contradictions from a single piece of evidence? All the other attorneys I know could maybe manage one, if that. But what does all this mean? You have proven contradictions regarding the murder weapon, but... Having come this far, there can only be one answer, and that is, the weapon used to kill the victim was not the she she -sito. I cannot pronounce that word, it's too long. What? A foolish, foolish idea born from the foolish mind of a fool, hardly foolish fool. Let's examine this again. What was it... What was it that made us think the sword was the murder weapon? Well, it's because Mystic Ami was holding it. Exactly. However, if you reflect on this, that is the only basis we have to assume such a thing. The impression left by the scene was just too strong. That is what influenced us. It influenced us to believe that the she Shishito was the murder weapon. <laughs> order, order. So maybe the sword was not the murder weapon. 
Even if that is the case, it changes nothing, Miles Edgeworth. The sister here saw everything. She saw the defendant stab the victim with a sword-like object. Hmm, that's true. The response, Mr. Edgeworth? If that is so, I would like the prosecution to answer the obvious question it raises. The obvious question? Yes, namely, where did the real murder weapon disappear to? It goes without saying that the police searched the main hall and the surrounding area. Perhaps the prosecution can enlighten us as to if a sword-like object was found. That answer the question, Miss Von Karma. No evidence of that kind was found. Hmm. Another mystery to throw onto the pile. A trial without a murder weapon is a tricky beast. Excuse me, can I say something? I just remembered something, actually. What is it, sister? I was just thinking. It's possible that just maybe what actually happened was was just over there. What exactly are you going on a boot here? The murder weapon, I mean. Maybe. I think I might know where the sword was disposed of. You what? Well then? I think we need to hear testimony from you one more time, sister. Possible. What else? What else could this old woman have seen? Did she throw it in the river? I saw the murder at around 11 p.m. And after asking what it, that it be reported, I went to the main gate, and there I saw tracks. Tracks that indicated the snowmobile had been used. It takes 15 minutes to walk to Dusky Bridge, but less than five using one of those. Maybe they threw the weapon into Eagle River and came back while I was knocked out. Iris could have done that. She can drive a snowmobile after all. And most people can drive a snowmobile. Hmm. Witness, please tell us everything you know right away next time. Well, I'm not in the best of shape. Well, with my back and my age, you know. Quite. There were indeed snowmobile tracks in front of the main gate. Here is a photograph. But, is there a way for them to be going backwards? It looks like a sm snowmobile drove up instead of the opposite way around, but I guess when we were there it was covered in snow. But it stopped snowing. I don't know. A snowmobile? Eh? I see. Well, it certainly is an interesting theory. The tracks begin in front of Hazakura Temple, and run all the way to Dusty Br Dusky Bridge. That solves your pesky little problem, yes? The Eagle River current is quite swift, meaning that it doesn't freeze over in winter, making it the perfect place to dispose of the murder weapon. Did she really go to the river to dispose of the murder weapon? Mr. Edgeworth, your cross-examination, please. I'm so confused on timing, though. Um. So the murder around 11 p.m. After asking for it to be reported, I went to the main gate. There was, I saw tracks. It takes 15 minutes to walk, but less than five. Maybe they threw it. Um, do we know how long she was knocked out? Refresh your memory. How long were you knocked out for? Thank you. Like I said, somewhere between 10 to 20 minutes. It's possible to get the bridge and back in 10 minutes using a snowmobile. I have to concede that is more than enough time. Is that all you wish to concede in Miles Edgeworth? Okay, so she was knocked out for maybe 10 minutes, 10 to 20 minutes, um, my, th 
I, I'm also thinking that maybe the killer came across Pearl because she's still missing. Um, like, yeah, we have the problem of Pearl missing and she, Elise went looking for Pearl. So we still have like all... Okay. Um... Tracks... Right around 11. Then she passed out for 10 to 20 minutes. Then Phoenix comes running out. She goes to the main gate. Saw tracks. I mean, let me look at that photo again. It kind of looks like the footsteps are erased by the snowmobile. Because I'm assuming that the running snow s steps are Phoenix running to the bridge. But had the... Um... Um... Let me ask about that. As I recall, there was a snowmobile outside the main gate when I visited. That it. That's it. That's the one, only one we have. It'll run no matter how much snow falls. Now, you're certain the snowmobile was there at the main gate when you arrived? Yes, of course. It was parked in front of the gate. So she had already gone, discarded the murder weapon, and returned by that time. Press further. I need answers to every possible doubt. The snowmobile in question. Was it still warm at that time? Huh? What do you mean? What do you mean? What do you mean, eh? What do you mean, Miles Edgeworth? Playing to a slow crowd here. It goes without saying that using snowmobile will heat his engine. If it was still warm, then it means it was recently used. Ah, I see. I never thought of that. Hmm, that's right. I overlooked that too. Of course you did. Can you answer the question, please, witness? I don't often go around touching hot engines. Hmm. However, now that you mention it, there wasn't any snow on it. Snow? Yes, for some reason, the snowmobile wasn't covered in snow. There wasn't any snow on it. Curses. It seems highly likely that the killer did use the snowmobile then, eh? How long does it take to get to Dusky Bridge by snowmobile? Five minutes. Wait, let me look at the weather report. Um, so, 7 to 10.50, and then lightning from 10 to 11. Okay, so yeah, when the murder took place, it would have stopped snowing. Okay, that matches. Maybe they threw the river. And like, there's more than one person could have. Fit. While it would have been possible time wise, one element remains out of place here. Oh? And what would this mystery element be? The killer's reasoning, Your Honor. Why did the killer do all this? Why go to Eagle River to dispose of the murder weapon when there are other methods? Hmm. Too many unanswered questions. Your response, Miss Von Karma? Turning to me for help over the slightest thing. Why don't you think for yourself once in a while, Your Honor? What? She's as over the top as always. But anyway, whatever the reason, the fact remains that the defendant could have done this. The murder weapon was disposed of in the river. Another point to me, Miles Edgeworth. Another mystery to feed the fire. Was there any reason to go and throw away the murder weapon? Luckily, there is surely a problem with this testimony. All I have to do is start poking holes in this flawed account. 
The timing is... You are sure about the time? Yes, I was worried about it, after all. Why was that? Because I have a strong sense of responsibility, especially at this time of year. The acolyte was being doused in freezing water at the time. I couldn't very well take it easy in the bath all night now, could I? So at 11, I decided to leave Hazakura Temple. Your estimation of the time seems reliable, at least. Please continue, sister. Okay, so she was leaving at 11. That doesn't make any s- wait, wait, wait. From 10 to 11, oh, she'll already be dead when she was pulling out the sword, so that kind of makes sense. It would have already have stopped snowing at the time. Uh, gosh, the timing of everything is what's what's doing me. Also, I would not have been in the bath when it was lightning out, so... But I don't know if that's like a more modern thing, or... Or what. She went to the main gate. Takes 15 minutes. I have a theory that I don't know. Because it's like currently my problem is the way the picture looks. I'm gonna try it. I don't think I'm right. Um. But to me, at the very least, it looks like the snowmobile tracks are covering the footprints. Which means the snowmobile would have been used after running away. After Phoenix left. At least that's what it looks like, unless the crime scene was contaminated. No, I knew that wasn't going to be it. Let's see. Tracks indicate. Is this the one where it's like, was it hot? Um. Only one we have. Uh, I'm stuck here. was it used for? Well then, takes five minutes. I don't think I've questioned this. In that case, why didn't you use it yourself? You could have spared yourself some walking. Ah, there's a reason for that. Have you got a moment for me to explain? I think that's why the question was asked in the first place. It was about a month ago. I was driving my beloved little snowmobile, happy as can be. I fetched some water and was heading back when I went and crashed into a tree. The tree and my back both went crunch, just like that. Crunch. Hmm. Crunch. I haven't been able to find the courage to write anything since then. Anyway, the killer must have used it. Hmm. I don't think I questioned this. You asked Phoenix Wright to report the crime, correct? Right, right, the one who trampled me. Seems she's the type to hold a grudge. There isn't a phone in the main hall, so I sent him to the bridge. Phoenix Wright, he didn't even have a cell phone on him. He had forgotten it at home, apparently. What a naive boy, as always. 
Not only do I always carry my phone, but I always had my whip in hand too. Anyway, I was really scared and it was taking him a while to get back, so I thought I'd go by the main gate for a spell. So it took him a while, but if he was if she was by the back, um I don't found into the main hall. Okay, so let's just Maya was here in the inner temple. And supposedly, Iris was in her room, but accordingly, she thought she saw Iris here stabbing Elise and then running back and then running in. I don't know. And then Larry was over in the Heavenly Hall. Um. I'm sorry, it's like really hard to think of it because there's still the possible witness in Pearl and the person could have taken her. I feel like, I don't know if this has anything to do with it, but I think Pearl's movement during the time is going to end up being important whenever we do find her. So if lightning struck at 10.45. Um, okay, so that's only the picture. And we still have the problem of the amethyst. 10 to 11. I'm not sure. Um, takes 15 minutes to walk. What was that? Iris could have done that. She can drive it. I saw the money. This again. Um, I'm gonna press harder. I will run no matter how much snow falls. And it arrives, it's hard to find the gate. I need snow wheel and wasn't warm. I see, never thought of that. Don't go touch an engine. There wasn't any snow on it. Which indicates it would have been used. On the report. Wait, if she saw. Wait, no. Snow the it snowed from seven to ten fifty, which means there would not have been any more snow falling afterwards. Then lightning from ten to eleven. Snow. Yes, for some reason, only the snowmobile wasn't covered in it. There wasn't any snow on it, curses. Did use it then? Hmm. 
so she saw it around 11, which means that the snow would have stopped falling. And then she said she waited a bit. Phoenix was taking way too long. Which I guess, since Phoenix was taking way too long, assuming that he'd... Assuming that he had run, she would have been waiting for at least 30 minutes. So that's like 11.30. But that's still a matter of someone else could have been driving. Like, I'm wondering if it was Larry who was actually driving. Although her clothes would have had snow on them. Okay, I'm gonna have to look this up. I'm just too lost. Um, let's see. Oh, okay. So I was on the right line. Um, with my thinking. Um, but still didn't complete it, I suppose. Um, it was the tracks that weren't making any sense. Because there's only tracks showing up, there's no tracks leading. Um, so that was the... Alright, yeah. This is a statement I can do it on. If I... Oh my gosh. If I can see. Um, present the picture. There we go. Okay, so it was the tracks thing that was wrong. I just put it on the wrong statement. Even though... Okay, I was on the right line of thinking. I admit this photograph proves something. It proves that the snowmobile was used on the night of the murder. You finally accepted the inevitable, it seems, Miles Edgeworth. However, if what the witness says is true, then why is there only one set of tracks? What do you mean? Iris left Hazakura Temple, threw the weapon into the river, and then returned. If this was the case, then naturally there should be two sets of tracks in the snow. Those from heading out to the ridge, and those from coming back. Ah, you're right. Hmm. You are forgetting one thing, Miles Edgeworth. On the night of the murder, it was snowing. The tracks leading to the bridge were erased by the snowfall. This removes your precious contradiction, now doesn't it? I see. While she was at the river, the snow stopped, leaving just the return of tracks. The return tracks in the snow. What do you have to say now, Miles Edgeworth? Is there a flaw in her theory? Yes. The idea that the snowfall covered one set of tracks. There's a contradiction in it. The tracks to the river were covered by snow. What a nice theory. However, Miss Von Karma, that is impossible. Why would you care to explain? Why there is a rude index finger currently pointed in my general direction? No need. The evidence will do all the talking for me. On the night of the murder, the killer went to and returned from Dusky Bridge. In order to dispose of the murder weapon, 
The outgoing tracks were raced by snow, or so claims Miss Von Karma. Mr. Edgeworth, present your evidence to the contrary, eh? Evidence of the outgoing tracks were not covered by the snow. The weather report. Witness, please tell us again what time it was you when you witnessed the crime. Like I said, it was around 11. Of course, this means that the weapon was thrown away after that time, correct? On that note, please take a look at this data. It is the weather report for Eagle Mountain on the night of the murder. The weather report? Snow started to fall at 7 p.m., but it stopped at around 10.50. Therefore, when the sister witnessed the crime at 11 p.m., the snow had already stopped falling. It is impossible for any tracks to have made after that time to have been covered up. That is true. Order, order. Very well, then. It looks like Mitz von Karma's claim has been snowed in. You deserve that. It's too soon to be closing this trial due to snow. Miles Edgeworth, how pathetic of you to rely on weather of all things. Answer me this, then. When is a weather report ever correct? Uh, no, 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 you got it all wrong. This isn't a forecast, this is actual data. Forecast data, all weather reports have some inaccuracies. It may have still been snowing well past been snowing in the vicinity well past 11 p.m. Hmm. That's true. Cannot be totally sure, eh? What? How did she pull that off? It had stopped snowing at Hasekura Temple when the murder took place. You need to provide conclusive evidence of this. Come this far, there's no turning back. Very well. I cannot allow any doubt to remain concerning this testimony. Ha, huh, you can't back down, can you? Such a perfectionist, Miles Edgeworth. Very well then, Mr. Edgeworth. It's the crime scene photo. Where is your evidence that it had already stopped snowing when the victim was killed? Um... Here, she's not covered in snow. Ultimately, it all comes down to one point. That being... Whether or not it was snowing in the courtyard when the victim was stabbed. That's right. But proving that is... Incredibly easy. If we want to know whether it was snowing or not, this photo will tell us everything. Of course, I am referring to the photo of the crime scene. As you can see, everything is covered with snow. With just one exception. And that is... The victim herself, Miss Elise Dono. Why is there no snow on top of her? The answer is simple. It had stopped snowing when she was killed, that's why. In other words, if the killer really did go to Eagle River to dispose of the murder weapon, then this photograph, there should be two sets of tracks. Order, order. Just what are you... Just what are you suggesting, Miles Edgeworth? To be honest, I am not entirely sure myself, but... This is simply what all the point facts point to. That night, someone used a snowmobile to leave Hazakura Temple. Probably Larry. From the tracks left, it can be understood that they were heading for Dusky Bridge. At that time, it was still snowing. Of course it was, because those tracks were erased by the snow. Then, when this person returned to Hazakura Temple, it was after the murder. The snow had stopped. Thus, the return tracks remained. Hmm. Can I say something? This all sounds a bit fishy to me. What does, sister? There is only one key for the snowmobile. Furthermore, on the night in question, we know that the defendant had it. The key was found in her room after the murder. Which can only mean that night, Iris used the snowmobile to go to the inner temple. 
but Iris said that she never went there. Should probably press on this point some more when I get the chance. The snowmobile can't cross the suspension bridge, so she must have left it on the Hazakura side of the bridge and crossed on foot. That sounds right, but what's odd is, when I left Iris and returned to Hazakura Temple, there was no snowmobile. I didn't see anything near Dusky Bridge. You must have failed to see it, sister. Maybe, but when I made it back to Hazakura Temple, it was there, by the main gate. The snowmobile, I mean. I know what I saw. It was covered in snow, too. But that isn't possible. Order, order, order in the court. What does this all mean? Larry. So then what was the snowmobile used for? It wasn't taken by the defendant when she went to the inner temple. If it had been, then the witness couldn't possibly have seen it by the gate. Furthermore, it wasn't used by the killer to dispose of the murder weapon. If that were the case, there should have been two sets of tracks in this photo. All we know is this. After it stopped snowing, someone used a snowmobile to return to Hazakura Temple. Hmm. Never thought a simple snowmobile could cause so much trouble. When something smells fishy, it's gotta be the butts. I think we've learned all we can from this witness. Yes, yes, I have nothing more to add. I've told you everything, everything that I know. But then, that still leaves us with the same problem. If only there was someone, a witness who could testify to have see having seen the snowmobile. A witness, huh? Was there no one out walking, perhaps, near Dusky Bridge on that night? I don't think that's likely. It was cold enough to freeze your ears off. Only an idiot would go out wandering in that. Unless they had something really important to do. Hmm. That's a shame. Hold on. Something is coming to me. An idiot may have gone wandering out on that subarctic night. Your Honor? Actually, there just might be one individual who may be of help to us. R really? You know someone who might have seen the snowmobile on the night of the murder? I don't know for sure if he saw it or not. But there are two things about him that do come to mind. Which are, first, that he saw something incredible on the night of the murder. And the second being, this individual that I'm thinking of went wandering around outside on that cold night. In other words, he is our kind of idiot. Mr. Edgeworth, who is this idiot you're talking about? Larry. This guy must be a product of John Lufke Laduc's Guide to Obnoxious French Painting. This is Larry Butts, a disciple of the victim, Elise Dionem. Her student? Interesting. And why was he wandering a boot outside on the night of the murder? Th that's... I could tell them about his designs for Iris, but it may cost us his credibility as a witness before I even call him. He is, after all, an artist. He was perhaps searching for something in the snowy scenery that would move him, although I cannot guarantee that this is the reason. And so, this unfortunate, knit, unreliable looking man, what exactly was it that he saw? I intend to extract that from him right here in this courtroom. Because I don't know. Summon this youth as a witness immediately. I have no choice, do I? I believe he is in the gallery for this trial. It will not take long to summon him. Very well. Larry. You may have escaped me yesterday, but today I'm going to get everything out of you. The court will now adjourn for a 20 minute break. Miss Von Karma, please see to preparing the next witness. Understood, Your Honor. Good. Well then, court is now in recess. Okay, so this is kind of happening the way I suspected. 
the snowmobile did throw a curve in my um, assessment, but I would. Okay, and it's just like, I know that you have to like present stuff on the right statement, but sometimes like when it's just like an overall general statement, um, where I'm finding the contradictions earlier than the game thinks, it's just a bit annoying um, when there's like all around problems and you can't just use that evidence on that problem. on anywhere in the statement and then it's hard to just um, get the evidence on exactly the right statement. That's like my only problem with some parts of these games. Because um, for example, that last testimony, I was just like, this entire thing does not make sense because of this photo, but had I presented it on the correct statement, it would have been fine. Um, but that's just, like, my one complaint. It's just that some things are just overall make no sense, and it's hard to pinpoint which one, like, the game is thinking. It also might be because of localization. Who knows? But I guess next time we will interrogate Larry, figure out why he was out near Heavenly Hall, and what was this incredible thing he saw. And hopefully Von Karma can actually whip it out of him. So in this case, it's actually a really good thing that she is the prosecutor for this case. But I will see you guys next time. Bye!